Welcome back to Backyard Ballistics. Today I'd like to talk a little about terminal ballistics and for now I'm going to focus on shooting against metals. There's plenty of entertaining videos on YouTube regarding shooting different metals with handguns and rifles, but as usual I am going to repeat some experiments and try to come to some scientific conclusions from the results. In theory, there would be a huge lot of combinations of guns and target metals, but I had to start somewhere, so I decided to go with a common combination. I'm going to shoot a 308 Winchester rifle at some 3 quarter inch A36 mild steel plates, and I am going to confront the effects made by three different bullet types, all of the same weight. The designs are going to be full metal jackets, solid hollow points and jacketed soft points. To get a good apple to apple comparison, I wanted the bullets to hit the steel plate at the same velocity, so I loaded them accordingly and chronoed them, or actually got good old Maurice to do it for me. The weapon of choice is a British L1A1 and the velocities of the three bullets were of about 740 meters per second or 2430 feet per second, very close to each other. It is somewhat slower than the military standard, but you'll see why I loaded them like this in a minute. Now let's go for the shooting. As you probably already know, shooting metal can lead to some fragments getting thrown back towards the shooter, so I had to use a shrapnel trap, which will also be useful for catching bullet fragments to analyze. I'd like to think that Maurice trusts my engineering, but it's more likely that he's scared by nothing anymore. Anyway, he shot the plates with the FMJ I loaded and here are the results. These are the craters left by the FMJ bullets. We shot two because the first one hit too close to the edge of the plate, but it didn't seem to make any significant difference. Now place your bets. What's going to happen with the hollow point and jagged soft points? They are designed to expand, so they should make a larger and shallower dent, right? Let's see. Here's the jacketed soft point. Doesn't look too different, does it? I would say that the dent is very similar to that of the FMJ, but we'll check that later by making a cross section. For now, let's go ahead and shoot the last round, the solid hollow point. Since a simple jacketed hollow point would have probably performed very similar to the JSP, I decided to use a Barnes TSX bullet. These are the so-called solid bullets, meaning that they are made entirely out of one material, a copper alloy similar to that used for jackets. So let's see if a bullet made completely out of copper will behave differently from traditional ones when hitting steel. The only apparent difference with the other dents, for now, is the color of the cavity, which is literally copper plated. So in practice, the FMJ, JSP and solid hollow point bullets all made very similar dents. But wait, full metal jackets sound so badass that they even named a movie after it, we would expect them to be better at penetrating. After all, we often get told that they do not expand, so they should make a deeper, narrower hole. Let's do some more testing with a couple military FMJ loads. I had some rounds of surplus German 762x51 made in 1990, so I tried those. To be accurate, I measured the velocity of two rounds and obtained 800 and 766 meters per second, so a little faster than my loads, but still short of what the 308 can do and quite irregular. I don't know if they degraded over time or if they come from a rejected lot, but we decided to also include another surplus load made by SMI of Italy in the 60s and that was doing 820 meters per second, which is pretty much the best you can get out of this barrel. So we shot the plate again, first with the German surplus, and as expected the dent is pretty much the same shallow crater that we saw before with my loads. And finally with the Italian surplus, and this time a slightly deeper, narrower crater formed. To better compare the effects, once I got back to the shop, I put the samples in a thin bladed bandsaw to make some cross sections and measured the diameter and depth of each crater. Now we can compare them much better. The first thing that is interesting to note is that my loads all made a very similar crater, even though they had completely different bullet structure, which suggests that given the same mass and velocity, the structure of the bullet is quite insignificant. And this makes sense. We tend to think of full metal jackets as not being easily deformed and staying relatively intact, since the soft lead core is contained within a stronger copper jacket. 
but this is only true when they are impacting soft and low density materials like water and animal tissue. Against something hard and dense like steel, the difference in strength between the jacket and core material becomes negligible compared to the strength of the target, so having the jacket closed or not at the bullet tip makes practically no difference. As soon as the point of the bullet gets in contact with something much harder, it becomes blunt, with material getting squeezed out of the way, and the result is practically the same no matter what the original shape was. When the material strength is overshadowed by the impact forces, shape doesn't really matter anymore. Increasing velocity, on the other hand, has a very dramatic effect on penetration. With increasing velocity comes an increase in inertial forces, which are those responsible for allowing a soft bullet to dent a steel plate. The faster we go, the less we have to worry about the bullet being too soft for the target. Here's why the two military loads penetrated a little deeper than mines, with the faster one penetrating deeper. To show that this phenomenon is entirely due to velocity, I am disassembling a cartridge from the same lot of Italian surplus ammunition, so that you can see the bullet is just a simple FMJ. It is non-magnetic and actually identical to the FMJ bullets I loaded, which were indeed Italian military surplus as well. At this point we can be pretty confident that full metal jackets are not that good at penetrating steel and certainly not better than the other commonly available bullet designs. Which is the reason why they invented armor piercing bullets, the science of which I will explore in another video. But for now I have two questions to ask you. First, how deep do you think an armor piercing 308 bullet would have gone? And second, would a regular 50 BMG bullet have gone any deeper? Stop the video now to answer in the comments, you will see the results at the end of this video. For now, let's stick with traditional bullets. I still have something to investigate. We know that increasing velocity increases penetration, but of course every gun has a limit, and in my particular case the maximum is about 830 meters per second. What I still can do is use a lighter bullet to obtain a higher velocity. This won't require higher muzzle energy, so it can be done without exceeding the operating pressure of the gun. But would it work? While a lighter bullet will go faster, it will also have less mass. Since I didn't have time to do this test as well, I asked my friend Cody, who has a small YouTube channel like mine, to do it for me and shoot the same steel plate with a 125, 150 and 180 grain bullet. He is not going to use a shrapnel trap though, so he needs to be at least 100 yards away. For this reason, I calculated the mass of velocities he will need to get all of the bullets to hit with the same energy and of course different velocities. The impact velocities will be at 100 yards, 810, 740 and 675 meters per second and you will see if the faster bullet will win even if it's lighter. So place your bets in the comments and then go over to Cody's video, you can find it here and in the video description. Now let's finally have a look at the effect of the armor piercing bullet. As expected it did go deeper than the others and the aspect of the cavity is totally different. This time the penetrator is much harder than the target material, so the situation is reversed. The penetrator stayed intact and practically undeformed, while the target material deformed to make room for it. We can indeed see that there is an almost perfect match for the recovered penetrator with the cavity, the only difference being at the top, where the much softer jacket mushroomed, creating a shallow crater. Finally, what about the 50 BMG? To make it a fair comparison, we are going to consider a normal bullet, in this case a solid design, and to be honest, this is a 416 Barrett impact, but the penetration capability is exactly the same as the 50. Anyway, this is the crater. You can see that part of the bullet remains stuck at the bottom of it, that it is much deeper than what the 308 did, and pretty much as deep as what the armor piercing did. The shape is totally different though, owing to the softness of the bullet, which mushroomed out creating a much larger crater, also causing the back of the plate to bulge heavily. I usually end up a video saying that this is all I wanted to tell you, but today it's not really the case, since I still have something more that didn't fit in this video, which I'll put in an upcoming one. Until then, you can go have a look at Cody's video, but first please let me understand if you liked the video or not using the thumb up or down buttons. Subscribe if you'd like to see more, and if you feel like it, you can directly help me produce better videos and upload them more often becoming a Patreon. I'll see you next time, bye.